Twitter Files 2.0 shows that conservatives were definitely blocked and banned on Twitter. Under Joe Biden, U.S. Air Marshals are now doing something other than protecting air travel. Plus, another example emerges of this left's sinister focus on children. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. Hope you had a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Twitter Files 2.0, which is the latest batch of stunning information released by Elon Musk through a massive Twitter thread posted by a reporter. If you recall, the information in the first Twitter Files release was posted by reporter Matt Taibbi, and it focused on the Hunter Biden laptop story. We learned that, yes, Twitter did actively work to suppress a legitimate news story and thus directly influence the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. We know through polling that enough votes would have been switched away from Joe Biden supporters had they known about the story, had they just known about it. Enough votes to turn the election. Now, in this new batch of information posted by former New York Times reporter Barry Weiss, we are learning that, in fact, Twitter did actively shadow ban and otherwise suppress and censor conservative voices simply because those voices did not adhere, not to community guidelines, but to the approved left-wing narrative. Here's Tucker Carlson talking about what happened to the libs of TikTok account. So Twitter, on the basis of what justification? None. Prevented libs of TikTok from trending. That means many people never saw what libs of TikTok posted. According to Barry Weiss, an internal Twitter memo from October of 2022, after Libs of TikTok's seventh suspension, admitted that the account, Libs of TikTok, was not breaking any rule. The memo said this, quote, acknowledged that Libs of TikTok is not directly engaged in behavior violative of hateful conduct policy. So they didn't actually do anything wrong. But Twitter censors kept censoring and shadow banning the account, Libs of TikTok, anyway, now, this account was one of many that Twitter suppressed and put on various blacklists to limit the reach so that as few people as possible could read or watch or listen to the posting of conservatives. Here's another example from Barry Weiss. Take, for example, Stanford's Dr. Jay Bhattacharya, who argued that COVID lockdowns would harm children. Twitter secretly placed him on a trends blacklist, which prevented his tweets from trending. More examples were posted showing Dan Bongino, Charlie Kirk, and others were put on search blacklists or do not amplify functions to limit reach. The information posted by Weiss confirms through Twitter employees that reach was purposely altered on conservative accounts. What many people call shadow banning, Twitter executives and employees call visibility filtering or VF. Multiple high-level sources confirmed its meaning. Think about visibility filtering as being a way for us to suppress what people see to different levels. It's a very powerful tool, one senior Twitter employee told us. VF refers to Twitter's control over user visibility. It used VF to block searches of individual users, to limit the scope of a particular tweet's discoverability, to block select users' posts from ever appearing on the trending page, and from inclusion in hashtag searches. Incredible. And just as a reminder, here's a Twitter exchange from October of 2020. This is from conservative commentator Dave Rubin to then Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. Do you shadow ban based on political beliefs? Simple yes or no will do. And Jack Dorsey replied, no. It's crazy what is going on here. Crazy, but not surprising. We knew this, and the left-wing media just rolled their eyes. Now, Musk can clean up Twitter But with these revelations and the fact that Twitter and likely all of big tech interfered with a presidential election, people need to go to jail. All right, next let's talk about what Joe Biden is doing with U.S. air marshals. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next let's talk about U.S. air marshals. You know who they are. They're the people who fly anonymously on commercial flights 
to keep the passengers safe from terrorist attacks and other problems. The air marshal program was put in place following 9-11 and it has clearly worked. But here's the problem. Now Joe Biden is coming up with a different mission for them. Rather than protecting us from terrorists in the air, Biden is sending them to the southern border. Here's the story. In recent weeks, federal marshals have been diverted from their usual jobs as covert travelers assessing and monitoring terrorist threats to help at the U.S.-Mexico border, according to Sonia Labosco of the Air Marshal National Council. She told Fox News marshals are now present on less than 1% of flights and instead sent to assist Border Patrol dealing with migrants who are currently overwhelming the southern border. Labosco said that the ground-based duties that they're pulling air marshals out of from, uh, the sky for are demolishing the chances of stopping another 9-11. Representative Brian Babin echoed those comments recently on One America News. We've got to have these people anonymously flying on these flights. We've had incidents. Uh, there have been incidents. People st have tried to get into the cabins on, on airliners. There was one the other day that mm -hmm. where uh, someone somehow or another got a, got a straight razor and held it to the throat of a, a fellow passenger. And we don't have uh, air marshals that are flying on there because of the outrageous disaster unfolding uh, uh, that has been unfolding for two years on our southern border because of, of, uh, of Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas. Yes, there is a disaster at our southern border. But rather than move air marshals away from their jobs, how about just shutting down the endless flow of illegals that are the result of Biden's open borders policy? In any event, according to a story in the Washington Examiner, not all air marshals are planning to comply. Dozens of marshals are planning to defy the order in what one official calls of an unheard of mutiny. Of course it's unheard of, but completely opening up our border to drugs gangs and human trafficking, along with millions of illegal border crossers, is unheard of too. All right, next let's talk about yet another example of the left-wing push to sexualize our children. It's just sick and it needs to stop. Every single day there are new incidents of children being exposed to material that is not age appropriate, that contains obscene references regardless of age, and that it's being hidden from parents. Recently, Duval County Public Schools in Florida ended a 25-year relationship with an LGBTQ youth organization citing inappropriate conduct. Here's the story. Jacksonville Area Sexual Minority Youth Network, or Jasmine, fell out of favor with the school district after a parent complained after seeing a social media post by the organization showing a minor participating in a lewd novelty card game. The memory game by Drunk, Stoned, or Stupid involves collecting matched pairs of images of male genitalia of varying sizes and skin colors. It can be found on web stores such as Amazon and is marked with a disclaimer that it's for players at least 18 years old. Oh my gosh. So this organization posted a picture of a child participating in this so-called game. This led to upset parents who were able to get the post removed and also pressure the school to cut ties with the organization. Now, in an interview with a local Jacksonville station, the CEO of Jasmine said that the post was regrettable, but the game is not available to minors. The CEO also added in a statement that the school district's move was an overreaction to a far-right extremist website spreading inflammatory misinformation about our HIV program with young adults. Now contrast what's going on with this example and examples of other games and books and activities that are completely inappropriate for children with what is happening to Kirk Cameron. The actor, writer, producer has put out a new children's book that celebrates family, faith, and biblical wisdom. But here's the problem. His publisher has yet to find one public library who will allow him to read the book during popular story hour reading programs at libraries across the country. One librarian in Rhode Island replied to Cameron's publisher by saying that the book does not align with the library's messaging. So left-wing organizations continue to push inappropriate sexual materials onto our kids, but Kirk Cameron's book on faith and family is shunned. So much for diversity and inclusion. All right, next let's talk about Rutgers University professor Brittany Cooper and the left's obsession with race. In particular, I'm talking about this anti-white rhetoric that seems to be more common and more extreme with each passing day. 
A tenured Rutgers University professor is facing backlash on social media after making a slew of disparaging comments against white people over the course of several years. But the college that employs her hasn't said a word. In her most recent tirade, Brittany Cooper, a tenured professor at Rutgers University, told The Roots' Michael Harriet in an online segment for the publication that white people are villains and even celebrated a statistic depicting a decline in white birth rates. Can you believe this? This is a tenured professor openly being racist. But hey, that's apparently okay if you're part of the woke radical left. Here's more from Professor Cooper. I think that white people are committed to being villains in the aggregate, right? The real sort of issue here, and I, you know, I've heard people sort of say it, is one, I think that white people viscerally fear. It's not that white people don't know, right, what they have done. They know. They are so corrupt. You know, their thinking is so morally and spiritually bankrupt about power that they can't let, you know, they fear viscerally, existentially letting go of power because they cannot imagine that there is another way to be. It is either that you dominate or you are dominated. The thing I want to say to you is we got to take these motherfuckers out. But I know, but like, we can't say that. Unreal. And of course, she throws in the call for violence, but then she says, she can't say that, but she did say that. If these are the standards to which Rutgers holds their professors, I think people should search for a different place to get a degree. This type of talk is what is dividing America, and it is the polar opposite of what Martin Luther King taught us about America and a colorblind society. Okay, so we've seen that Twitter did in fact censor conservatives, Biden is sending air marshals to the border, and Rutgers professor is a full-on racist. We need to ask them, do you have a relaxed brain? I got what you call like, I don't know, a relaxed brain. So first we have to start with the Washington Post and reporter Daniel Wu, who felt compelled to write about, guess what? Yep, racism. Because as you saw in the previous story, the left is obsessed with it. Daniel Wu took the obsession to a whole new level by writing a story in which he says the Discovery Channel Shark Week television event is racist. Check this out from the Washington Post Twitter account. Researchers say Discovery's programming overwhelmingly featured white men as experts while emphasizing negative messages about sharks. You can't make this up. <laughs> the story goes on to say that Shark Week lacks diversity and has too many white guys named Mike. I mean, what can you even say to that? And then, of course, we have breaking news from the Babylon Bee. DNC and media collude to suppress story about DNC and media colluding to suppress story. And then how about this story on a great new Christmas idea? Fun new Antifa on the shelf doll burns down different part of your house every night. There you go. Antifa on the shelf and racist shark week with white guys named Mike. All brought to you by the woke radical left. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our next show will be Monday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.